Isn't the night just beautiful? It is, especially when we are alone together. Too bad sunlight and I don't get along. That's alright. I think you're prettier in the moonlight. Is your family okay with this? You mean with our relationship and the fact that we're both girls? Sometimes I worry that they don't approve. My family is pretty understanding. They did put up with me being a Wiccan. After all, a Wiccan is one thing, but I'm very different. I've never had a problem with you being a vampire. I think it's pretty cool. I love you. When I'm with you I feel more alive than I ever have in 400 years. Even if my family didn't approve, I'd still love you with all my heart. We'd better get you home. You have class tomorrow. Okay, but let's not be in a hurry. So, what is it like living with a legend like the professor? It's never, how shall I say it, uneventful. Your stepsister lives here too, right? She's a teacher at the university, and the professor took me on as his assistant. My stepsister and the professor are related, so that technically makes him my uncle. Video games are a pretty big deal these days. Back when I was little, before my rebirth, we played games like Farley Break and Queek. Once I also played Al Kirk's. Classic medieval children's games, things certainly have changed since then haven't they? Yes, especially people's attitudes towards homosexuality. Yes, more and more people are realizing that there is nothing wrong with being in love with someone even if that someone is of the same sex. Sadly, not everyone agrees, but they are becoming the minority. Thankfully though, outdated notions, which have been holding humanity back for centuries are starting to fall to the wayside. Are these changes in attitude also showing up in video games? I know of this special, magical place where we can find the answer to that question. Magical place? Like your bedroom? That, is a different kind of magical place. Then, I'm guessing you're talking about this ship of understanding I keep hearing about. Yes, I keep forgetting you've never been there. Fanbot 3000, 2 to beam up. Acknowledged, Mistress Chloe. Energizing. Welcome to the Ship of Understanding. Incredible. In all my centuries I've never seen anything like it. That's nothing. Let's go to the bridge. From here any question can be answered. The professor is really amazing. He built a wonder that is a perfect balance of science, magic, and imagination. Leonardo da Vinci would be so jealous. You knew him? No. He was a bit before my time, but I did bite the neck of someone who idolized him. I think his name was Franklin or something like that. That was back when Boston was still just a colonial city. Exactly. When did you start liking girls, or realized you liked them? I had a tryst with Bridget Helm, in 1923, in Munich. It was short, but made me realize I preferred girls over boys. And, you? When I met a cute, shy, pale girl with beautiful eyes who made me happy just being with her. I'm glad I was your first. Speaking of which, when did LGBT characters first start appearing in video games? Yes, well, the first video game with a known homosexual character was in Focom's Moon Mist. A text adventure game from 1986. To tell the truth, LGBT characters appeared in games quite often, but throughout the 80s they were used for comic relief, or were simply ridiculed. More truly progressive LGBT representation in games has risen in the last several years. Could you give me a few good examples? Probably the most well-known is the Mass Effect series, which allows you to romance characters regardless what sex or race they belong to. Elder Scrolls V Skyrim also lets the player marry characters regardless of sex and race. Some MMORPGs with marriage systems also allow you to marry a player character of the same sex, 
Interesting. I've heard some people complain that LGBT isn't being represented enough or not at all in video games today. You're probably talking about social justice warriors. The one thing to remember about them is that their ideas for representing LGBT in video games is often degrading and perpetuates old stereotypes. While some SJWs legitimately want to do good, they don't realize the ideology they've latched onto is very negative and harmful. The SJW majority pushes what they call a progressive movement for equality for women, for minorities, and the LGBT communities. But in truth their ideology promotes thinly veiled bigotry, outdated racial and sexual stereotypes, and does nothing to resolve the causes of discrimination. Groups like Feminist Frequency do far more harm than good with their extremist views. More and more people are opening their eyes to the truth about their actual agenda, but unfortunately they have the attention of the mainstream media who are more than happy to help give them a national voice. In recent cases they've used fear tactics and threats to force companies to comply with their demands. The Dead or Alive Extreme 3 controversy is just one example. It's terrible there are people out there who spread such negativity while pretending to fight for what's right. Luckily, there are people who understand that education is the best way to combat bigotry. Also, as long as you love who you are, it doesn't matter what others think of you. The only acceptance you really need to justify who and what you are is your own. That's right. Nobody else can justify your existence for who you are but you. This world would be a better place if more people understood that simple fact. Being represented in movies, TV shows, and video games is okay. However, the SJW ideology teaches that the LGBT community aren't normal people, and that they should be treated differently because not being normal is some kind of handicap. This is what many of them believe, and, the media thinks this is okay? Don't they realize how degrading that is? It is hate-mongering disguised as activism. The right way to treat an LGBT character is to not parade their differences around like a giant sign on their back. It should simply be a trait of their character, no different than having a mole on your cheek. If it's in their character to flaunt their homosexuality to show the world they're proud of who they are, it is okay, but it's also okay for them not to. You mean like having an LGBT character in a YouTube show without giving any sign that character is lesbian until it becomes relevant to the show? Way to break the fourth wall, Nina. But, you are right. That is the way it should be. Don't parade their homosexuality around because you want to make it look like you're being fair, but let them be just like everyone else. Because, that is what people in the LGBT community are. They're just like everyone else, with the same cares, the same worries, and just because they love someone of the same sex that doesn't mean they're somehow something alien and different. The point is, they shouldn't be viewed as unusual. In the collective consciousness of society, acknowledge us for who we are, not what we are. I like that. In recent years, video games have demonstrated a far more positive and progressive approach to representing LGBT characters than most other forms of media. There are exceptions, but the majority has become far more positive and truly progressive. The Mass Effect series and Skyrim are two of the best examples of what I mean. There are others but these two serve as the most perfect demonstrations of this concept. Other slightly more positive examples include Poison from the Street Fighter series, Birdo from Super Mario 2, and let us not forget the homosexual and transgender characters that have appeared in the Persona series. I see, so in many ways video games have a leg up on society when it comes to how the LGBT community is represented. As I said there are exceptions where LGBT characters are expressed negatively in games, but those are becoming few and far between. If only race, sex, and nationality were treated the same way. One battle at a time, dear Mina, one battle at a time. Okay, beam us back home fanbot. I hope that helped to answer your question. It did. Thank you. I hope it also eliminated any doubts you had about us. To be honest, I don't know where that came from. Maybe it's because my feelings for you are so strong. I feel the same way about you. How can we help others who feel the same way? We can encourage them to like, favorite, 
and subscribe, and to share this video on social media like Twitter, Facebook, and Google+. That would certainly do a lot of good. We are in your bedroom. Yes, yes, we are. I see. So what do you suppose we do about that? Hello everyone, I hope you enjoyed that very special episode of Chloe and the Professor. I have with me as my special guest, the Professor himself. Hi there everybody, Professor, this episode was very important to you. Why, Jake, it's a message that needed to be conveyed. As a society we need to stop pushing people away because of their differences. It is our differences, our diversity, which makes us stronger when we embrace those differences. While the LGBT lifestyle isn't for everyone, it shouldn't mean that those who choose to embrace it shouldn't be treated any different than anyone else. That's a fairly progressive idea considering what's been happening in certain parts of the country in recent months. What's happening, Jake, is that ancient, archaic ideas and notions that have held us back as a people for centuries are starting to fall away. Those who still cling to these ideas see it as an attack on their very way of life when it's simply society choosing to believe differently. They've been taught that they're being persecuted for their beliefs, but that simply isn't the case. What can people do to help resolve these problems in our society? The best way is through education not legislation. Many issues can be solved this way, through education that doesn't candy coat the issues or confuse it with politically correct lingo. Don't tiptoe around the issues. Be straight and honest with people and you'd be amazed with the kind of positive results you'll achieve. So, that was your aim with this episode, it was, and I hope we opened a few eyes. I don't expect everyone to get it, but if a few people do then we've done our job right, I hope so too, Professor. Well, this has been the Chloe and the Professor After Show. I'd like to thank our special guest the Professor for coming to talk with us today, I'm always glad to be here, Jake. Until next time, stay frosty everyone, see you later. That is the situation as it stands, Madam President, I see. So we have no idea who currently has the microtransactor, then? The professor, and I have a few possible leads. My people are looking into it? Good. If he's involved we might have this wrapped up soon, I doubt that. Whoever these people are, they've got serious resources and connections. We aren't dealing with fanboys here. Who are we dealing with then? I don't know, but whoever they are, they're serious professionals. Thank you for keeping me updated. Let me know whenever there are any new developments. I will. And rest assured Madam President that the professor and I will find these people, and bring them to justice whoever they may be. Have you found the second artifact? It is being elusive, but we have leads on its location. We will have it in our possession soon. Good. Very very good. Soon we can begin implementing phase 2. The gaming world will be ours. Oh.